Good morning, good afternoon, good evening guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. Today again walking and talking here on the beach in Phuket. Yes, I have five amazing Bitcoin charts, really amazing Bitcoin charts. I have an amazing trading tip, some travel advice, talking about the news, answering a question and of course ending the video again with a beautiful life quote while I walk this amazing beach here in Phuket guys. I'm very early, it's very quiet, could be the last time I walk this beach for uh, the next couple of months because this week we will be leaving back to Europe for a couple of months. We will go some skiing and visit Spain and visit Portugal. Now let's quickly jump into the charts to show you exactly what is happening because we keep knocking heaven's door around 70k but we didn't break it yet with a full candle so let's see what the charts have to say. Bam. The first chart today, guys, is this four hour chart on Bybit. We can see that Bitcoin, every candle is four hours, try to break the 70K level again. We couldn't break it. We did reach the 70K with that wick, but the next candles, we could not go to that level again. Now we see a small retrace on that chart. Now we see that red candle, it close in around three hours, that one over there. So that red candle that went all the way to the low of 66,900. So these candles by now are almost 3K candles. So please don't get shaken out by 3K candles. In the far future, we will see like 10K candles. So it's very important to understand that a retrace is needed to go and continue. Just like I drew the last time, I hope you still remember when I drew like this, we will go up, we will come down and we will go up. We keep repeating that move. It's normally to pull back a little bit to these volume areas to continue again, maybe to 72 to 75K. And I know some people uh, comment that Didi, can you next time please draw that line a little bit higher? So maybe I can extend this line to uh, like somewhere over there, <laughs> to 80K maybe guys. But that's how Bitcoin moves. Uh, a healthy retracement is part of a bull market cycle. And if that retracement is 10% or 20%, it doesn't matter. It's not the end of the bull market run because the end will not be there before the halving. It just can't be there before the halving. It has never been there before the halving and in my honest opinion, it will never be there before the halving. Now, let's jump into the next chart. For all the people that are invested in altcoins, yes, the altcoins also don't have the bull market top yet. Look, that is where we are with the altcoins. We can see the yellow circle every time. That's a small correction. And after a small correction, we go into this parabolic run with the altcoins. That is what I expect now again, guys. So yes, we had that yellow circle, a small retrace, and we are going to go into parabolic run with that altcoins. And will that be all the way up to 2 trillion or 5 trillion or 7 trillion market cap? We don't know but the altcoin run has not started yet. We also don't know if it's going to be as intense as the previous altcoin markets, because a lot of Bitcoins will be locked up in a spot ETF and not be able to exchange them to any of your beloved altcoins. So there will maybe be a little bit less liquidity for the alts, but let's see. We will see how this market will play out. More important, of course, the Bitcoin price. We can see that we have now these darkish blue dots on the chart. If we look now back to the left on the chart, those vertical dotted lines, that is exactly when those blue dots started on the chart in the previous cycles. Completely on the left, from that moment, we still went up massively with a lot of blue dots. Then the second time, we still went up massively with those blue dots. And then the third time, when the first blue dot appeared, we still went up massively with those blue dots. Now those blue dots just started to appear. Another indication that the bull market is just getting started. The Bitcoin days in profit also show us that at the moment everyone is in profit. So everyone that even bought around 69k is now in profit. So nobody has selling pressure. They are all happy, they are all in profit because the Bitcoin days in profit is now 100%. And if we look at the Bitcoin after the halvings, we can see how it went up massively every time and again. The halving is of course completely left on the chart, where all the three lines begin. That is the moment of the halving. All of those cycles, 2012, 2016 and 2020, went massively up after the halving, that moment on the left. This cycle will end in April 2024, somewhere between the 16th and 21st of April. 
When this cycle ends, a new line will start from that hard moment left in the bottom, probably an orange line. That orange line will, in my honest opinion, again, go massively up, just like the purple line did, just like the blue line did, and just like that green line did. And if that orange line will go massively up, just like those lines, it would be easy for Bitcoin to reach 100k levels and even higher. That is how you need to look at this chart. Not at how we end on the right side of the chart, but how a new line will start to begin on the left side from April 16th, 20th, whatever it is, and go up like all those other lines. That is where we are in the bull market. And here you can see that as well. The realized cap, we are not even near the top. We are just leaving the dotted 0% line at the bottom. We are crawling up. We are at 20%. We can all the way go up to 80% or maybe even 100% if the mass liquidity of that spot ETF will drive Bitcoin to higher highs than we expect. But even if we look at the diminishing returns of the realized cap, it will take a long time to even reach 60%. We are totally not near the bull market top. And if you are looking at Bitcoin as an investment still, then all these charts are important to you. But if you will start to accept Bitcoin into your life as your core capital, then you will understand my mindset and you will understand that Bitcoin is not there to make more US dollar or Euro, but that you should be making more Bitcoins. And this table is telling you exactly why. Because on this table, you can see that Bitcoin by far since 2011 has been the best performing asset ever. There is not one asset that comes close to the Bitcoin return on investment. Not one asset. In annualized return on investment, Bitcoin made 155.2%. If you now compare it to all the other, the US Nasdaq, US growth, US value, all of them, the treasuries, the bond market, the stock market, the commodities market, if you compare it to all of those, 18%, 15%, 13%, 10%, 10%, 9%, we are doing 155% with Bitcoin. Even if you just look at 2024, in 2024 we did 61.5%. All those other asset classes, the top of them did 7.2%. You should be in Bitcoin. Forget all the traditional finance. Go into the new 21st century gold finance Bitcoin. And a lot of people always ask me, yeah, did you, but how can Bitcoin start it in 2008, 2009? You know, doesn't it take a little bit more time to invent something beautiful as Bitcoin? Yes, it will take a shitload of more time. And that is what you see on this timeline. It all started way back somewhere in 1975. That is when TCP IP was invented. And then a few years later, we got cryptography. And then a few years later, we got linked timestamping. And after that, we were invented public keys as identities. And after that, the Byzantine fault tolerance and the digital cash was then already there in 1980s, 85 or something. And that's how Bitcoin grew to what it is today. It was after 1990 that the proof of work was invented. Just pause this video and analyze all those names that contributed to Bitcoin from the 70s already. Smart contracts, Nick Zabo, peer-to-peer -peer networks, Bram Cohen invented that. And that's how we crawled up to what Bitcoin is now. So just remember all these names over there and show respect to all those people that did their part of building Bitcoins since the 70s all the way up to 2009 when Satoshi Nakamoto launched Bitcoin on the 3rd of January. And that is how the evolution of technology has grown into Bitcoin in the last 30 years. It's not just the last 10, 11, or even 15 years. It has taken way longer for Bitcoin to become what it is now. And all these inventions were part of that. So yes, Bitcoin is not just something that was written up in a white paper and created in a couple of days. It is something that is there to change the world into a place where we all have equal access to the same monetary system and we all have the equal possibilities to take part in that new decentralized monetary system. That is also a store of value 
and providing us of the freedom that other people already had because they were part of that huge scam of the central banks. We can also see that the official people understand this now. Even the CME, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, is now outperforming Binance. It hasn't happened during this cycle in 2020. The CME is now overtaking Binance volume. CME is institutional investments. Spot ETFs is institutional investments. They are taking over the volume of the centralized exchanges like Binance. It's very important to understand that shift from retail people that use Binance or Bybit. If you want to use Bybit, use the link down below. By far the best exchange out there. But we need to see and be honest that we can see the shift. We can see Bitcoin changing from hands from the normal people into the hands of institutional investors. It is just very clear. If you look at the bull market correction drawdowns, then this bull market Till now, we had a max drawdown around 20%. In 2018-21, we had max bull market correction drawdowns of 25 to 30%. If you compare the start of this bull market, you can compare it to the 2016-17 bull market or even to the 2012 bull market. It was very steep, but by, that, by back then they had huge crashes. The crashes became smaller. Of course, we had a huge crash in 2020, but that was, of course, that COVID crash. That was a crash of more than 60%. But if this market continues like this now, then the max crash still now was 20%. And it could stay the same if you will see a bull market like 2017, guys. A very important chart to see for you guys is this one. The Bitcoin ETFs versus the gold ETFs. The gold ETFs are at 96.2 billion US dollar. Gold took decades to build up that volume in the gold spot ETF. The Bitcoin spot ETF that started now almost two months ago is already at 54 billion US dollar. So the Bitcoin spot ETF is growing tremendously. And in my honest opinion, it won't take long before Bitcoin will overtake the gold spot ETF. It is going to happen, not only because the Bitcoin price is going to increase and by that creating more volume in billion dollars, but also because people are going to leave the gold spot ETFs to invest in the Bitcoin spot ETFs because they will see that their friends and colleagues are outperforming the gold spot ETF with the Bitcoin spot ETF. The Bitcoin spot ETF made 20% profit only in the first month. So they will tell their friends, hey, I'm making shitloads of profits with that Bitcoin spot ETF. So they will change their gold spot ETF slowly for the Bitcoin. So the gold will come down, the Bitcoin will still keep increasing and will overtake the whole gold spot ETF volume. So there's a lot of charts for today, guys. We can clearly see that we are just at the end of that green box. And if you look back to the past, every time when we start to exit that green box, and cross that purple line, that purple top line, that is the second part of the bull market. That is the part where we go even up higher. It happened in the beginning of 2017, when we left that green box into that pinkish box, we went all the way up till the end of 2017, higher. It also happened in 2021 beginning, we went all the way up until November, higher. Now again, 2024, we are exiting almost that green box we are breaking that purple line from this moment normally we will just be going up higher higher and higher if you look to 2017 you can see that when we hit that purple line two times we had a retrace the first time we retraced the second time we retraced that was 40 percent crashes in 2017 we are hitting that purple line now we could see a 30 percent or a 20 percent crash but the moment you will leave that green box and break that purple line with that black line, that is the moment the second part of the bull market will start and will go massively up. That were the charts for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed the charts for today, guys. Yes, of course, in the short term, it can still be a little bit volatile and we can have these dips of 15 to 20%, just as we already saw a couple of these dips, like I think four or five already now since the bear market bottom, going up, 20% dip, going up, 20% dip, you know, that is all part of the bull market. You need to zoom out and look at the bigger picture. And that bigger picture I just showed you with all those charts. 
in almost two months time, we are now at a spot ETF market cap of 50 billion. Gold is around 96 billion. It took decades for gold to reach that market cap. We could double from here in the spot ETFs easily in the next two months, which would mean we would then have broken the spot ETF of gold. So when we double another 50 billion, that means another increase in the price because the demand is massive and the supply is just not there. And in a couple of weeks, the supply will be even 50% of the supply that we see now on a daily basis. From 900 Bitcoins being created every day, we will go into 450 Bitcoins being created every day. So please understand that halving is not a seldom news event, that halving is an event that will propel Bitcoin prices even higher because the demand will keep increasing and the supply will keep decreasing the new supply daily. So my tip to you is enjoy this bull market ride to the fullest. If you're not invested yet, then buy each and every dip. Every time when we dip 20%, add to your portfolio all the way till all the indicators tell us hey now we are nearing the top of a bull market and if we would have another traditional bull market yes take your profits now but i'm going to talk about that later in the video as well because there is a very good question is this gonna be a normal bull market let's see the travel tip for today is going to be short and powerful I know that there is a life code. The life code is money can't buy you happiness. Indeed, money will never buy you happiness. It will though buy you a ticket to Thailand. And in Thailand, you live with a little bit more happiness than in Europe. And it's not just because it's a different country, it's because those people there are all just a little bit more happy. In average, the people in Europe are just not that happy and that negative energy will affect you as a human being. If you surround yourself with a lot of happy people, like in Thailand, people that are not running continuously for the materialistic world, but are just happy with what they have, if you surround yourself with those people, like for a couple of months, you will start to feel more happy as well. So the travel tip for the day is, yes, money won't buy you happiness, but it will buy you a ticket to Thailand and come here to Thailand and visit me and join me here in the parties, but also in the beach walks and everything else, because Thailand is a perfect country to make your first trip to Asia too. If you want to travel to Asia, please choose Thailand for the first time. I know all the other countries are amazing as well. Indonesia, Vietnam, Cambodia, the Philippines, all beautiful. But Thailand is just a little bit more easy for the first time to travel, a little bit more compact and just beautiful in the whole. It has amazing food, it has amazing people, it has amazing beaches, everything is really beautiful in Thailand. So travel tip for the day, money won't buy you happiness, but it will buy you a ticket to Thailand and it will give you happy, 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 happy long time. And for all the men, yes, you can also get other happy, happy, happy endings. <laughs> but I was not referring to that. I was just referring to a happy life. <laughs> happy life, happy wife. Oh no, happy wife, happy life. <laughs> Come to Thailand, have fun over here. The trading tip today, guys, comes from a question. How do I track all those cryptocurrencies I buy? Now, there is an app called CoinStats. I've been using CoinStats for some time. There is a link down below the video, of course, so that you have a short link to the platform so that you have the right platform and not some scam or something out there. But with CoinStats, you can connect your wallets. So it's not using your wallets, it's just reading data from your wallets. Your MetaMask or your Ledger or your Bybit wallet or your Binance wallet, whatever you want. You can connect them to CoinStats and it will track your complete portfolio on all those wallets. So you can see in one app exactly what you own, what you don't own, if you are in profit, if you are a loss, all that overview you can have in Skynsets. You have a free version and you have a paid version. You need to do your own research to select which one you want to use. But if you ask me, Coinstats is a very beautiful app to track all your cryptocurrencies and have a beautiful oversight on what you all have. Because I know how it is. You have NFTs there, you have NFTs there, your MetaMask, your trust wallet. Because you diversified your whole portfolio, you lose your complete oversight because it's on so many wallets. 
But when it comes near the bull market top and you want to take profits, you need to know exactly where your cryptocurrencies are, where your Bitcoin is, where your Ethereum is, where your NFTs are, your ordinals, all of that. You need to know exactly where they are. And if you use one app to keep that oversight where everything is, then around that bull market top, it's a little bit more simple to track what you need to sell and where to take profits. So Coinstats, there's also other ones, but I like Coinstats. Now, that was the trading tip. The news for today is about Bitcoin because some people, ARK Invest for example, are telling us that Bitcoin could reach $1 million even before 2030. That's like way earlier than predicted. As Cathy Wood first predicted that Bitcoin would be around a million, like after 2030. But now she adjusted it on television and said, no, 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 because all that spot ETF adoption, we will there before 2030. So she expects a Bitcoin price of more than a million before 2030, and even after 2030, she expects a Bitcoin price of over 2 million US dollars. And she is the CEO of ARK Invest, which is a huge Bitcoin investment company. It also has a spot ETF and everything. Cathy Wood is not like just someone. She's a pretty big person in this industry when it comes to, you know, Bitcoin. And she is now saying more than a million before 2030 and more than 2 million after 2030. So people asking me, should I still buy Bitcoin at 60K or 70K? If you believe and have the patience to wait all the way to 2030, it is always a good moment to buy Bitcoin. It is never bad to buy even the top 10 because the top will be a bottom in the far future. So you keep buying Bitcoin and start to treat Bitcoin as your core capital. So it's never bad to trust your core capital. If you don't trust that Bitcoin goes higher than 70K, then just don't buy it. Don't buy Bitcoin now to make a short-term profit of 70K like in the next couple of months. That will become difficult maybe. We just don't know. We don't know how much more liquidity will come from those uh, spot ETFs and the retail market, but it's less likely that you will double your investment at the moment than when you bought at 16K. But if you zoom out and you buy Bitcoin for the long term, yes, 70K is definitely going to double. It can take four years, it can take eight years, but 70K is going to be doubling, tripling or quadrupling even in those eight years. So in Bitcoin, you look at the long term play. Not short term, you won't become a millionaire in two days time. Impossible at these levels. Then you should have listened to me and bought around 16K or the cycle before at 3K or the cycle before that at $900 when I was there as well telling you, guys, I'm going all in. I'm selling my house, I'm selling my cars, I'm selling everything I own because I'm going to go all in in Bitcoin. And I kept repeating that 2018 bottom 3K, I told you to buy. I reminded you at the COVID crash, you can still buy Bitcoin around 4K. And I also reminded you around 16K, that would be the bottom, buy Bitcoin. If you didn't buy that, no, you're not going to quadruple your capital or triple your capital now in the short term. But yes, you will in the long term. And answering one of the questions of one of the followers, guys, the question is, Didi, do you still believe that we are going to follow the same cycle that we have done the last couple of bull market cycles? It's a four year cycle. 2013 to 2017, 2017 to 2021, that's like the top to top. Of course, if you're talking about the halving, it's 2012 to 2016, 2016 to 2020, 2020 to 2024. Now the question is, are we still going to continue that cycle, that four-year cycle, now that the volume of the spot ETS, for example, has been proven to be massive? Is this going to continue that volume? And will that still mean we will ever see a bear market? Are these people not buying for the real long term, like 20 to 30 years? So if they buy for 20 to 30 years, can Bitcoin still even drop back down below to like 30K or 40K in the far future? Will we ever see a 70% crash again? That is the most asked question at the moment. I need to be completely honest. I don't have a crystal ball. Yes, I know I sometimes say glass ball, but now, okay, I don't have a crystal ball. <laughs> I don't know. I have never experienced a market that bullish as did that we break the all-time high before the halving. I've never experienced a market that was tracked how much new liquidity is coming into the market because of the spot ETF. We are talking about $600 million worth of Bitcoin that is being accumulated every single day. I and mean, we didn't even see the halving. So we still need to see the most bullish momentum 
in Bitcoin and the volume is already insane high. This volume can only increase because we can see that they even did 750 million US dollar in the last couple of days and 800 million dollar. It won't take long that the volume will be 1 billion dollar per day guys. So we can't predict that market because we just don't have any history that can show us how that the market did when there was so much demand for Bitcoin. And I believe that the retail investors are not even in the market yet. That FOMO will still start, but I also believe that the retail investors won't be buying as much as they were buying in the last cycles. Because just imagine, at that moment, they were able to buy Bitcoin at 3K or 10K or 15K or even 20K, you know? <laughs> Morning! <laughs> but now, they can only buy at 70K or 80K. So the FOMO will kick in now that we have that all the high, but it won't be that easy for them to buy because 70K is way more than 20K. So who says that the retail investors will even start to buy? So maybe that will be balancing out. Less retail investors, more institutional investors. And of course, maybe a huge part of those retail investors will now buy through the spot ETF as well. And by that create a little bit more volume in the spot ETF, but also by that create less volume in the retail um, investment side. So maybe that will balance out. But we will see after 30 more days, 60 more days, after the halving, is the spot ETF volume going to be every day 500 million, 600 million? If that will continue like that? Yes, then I expect that this cycle could become different because I don't think that most of the people that buy through a spot ETF want to dump Bitcoin at the top. But aside of all the emotions, aside of all the crystal ball predictions, aside of all the bullishness that is in the market, I'm probably just a very simple guy that just looks at the charts. If the charts will tell me that the bull market top will be in, and if you choose the Pi Cycle indicator or the RSI or whatever indicator you use to indicate that the top is near, I will start to take profits. When the top is in, even if it is then maybe a small top, maybe only a crash of 30%, when that indicator is telling me that the top is in, I will be selling a part of my Bitcoins. And if you go a little bit higher, I will be selling another part of my Bitcoins. So I will dollar cost average out of Bitcoin during that whole rise into the top. Because there will always be a dip. There is always a dip, there is always a correction. And if that correction is only 30%, beautiful. I will be able to buy Bitcoin back 30% cheaper. And if the correction will be 70%, also amazing. Then I will be able to buy Bitcoin 70% cheaper back. I don't believe that a market can only go up. As you have seen already till now, we are in a bull market, but even in a bull market, all that buying volume, we are still able to crash 20%. And everyone is bullish, and there is a shitload of demand, and still we have seen crashes of 20%. So why would it not be possible in the moment that we normally see a bear market to see a crash of 60% or 50% if we can already see crashes of 20% in the bull market? So my honest opinion, there will always be a bear market. There will always be a moment that people are like taking profits. They're like, wow, this is really high. Bitcoin is at 150K. Wow, I've never thought that Bitcoin could even go to 150K. Maybe I should sell my Bitcoin. Maybe I should take my profits. You know, there's even people that bought like 50 Bitcoins for $200 each or something. If they take profit now at 150K, that's a shitload of profit. And a lot of the market will be emotional involved into that. They will be like, wow, let's take profit. And then we will see a dip. And then the dip will be bigger than a 20% dip that we have seen now in the bull market, in the bullish momentum, in the momentum that every says we will go higher, 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 we will become more bullish. And here we even see 20% dips. Just now imagine that we go into that momentum that everyone is like starting to doubt. Ooh, this is really high. Ooh, that indicator is telling us we're topping out. Ooh, that influencer is also taking profit. Ooh, maybe we should start to take profit. Just imagine in that mindset, that Bitcoin can definitely crash 20% and even 40%, maybe even 50%. And yes, that part that's being held by all the spot ETFs, of course, maybe they are not selling that. And maybe that will make sure that Bitcoin doesn't have a 70% crash. But a 50% crash, 40%, always possible because this market is based on emotional people. 
and emotions control the market. Also at the spot ETF, there will be people that will be like, hey, we bought at 40K, we are now at 120K, fuck, we tripled our money in a year time, maybe we should take our investment out so we can enjoy the free ride with the rest of our capital. And if many people will take their initial capital out near the bull market top, it will be a bigger crash than 20%, believe me, because we already seen 20% crashes now in the bull market. So in the bear market, they are gonna be more extreme. That is my honest opinion about everything. I just analyze the charts. When they tell me the top is in, I will start to take profit. Simple as that. And by that, we come to the end of the video, guys. The end of the video is, of course, a life quote. The life quote for today is, it takes courage to grow up and become the person that you really are. And that's really true. It takes a lot of courage to become who you want to be or who you need to be or, you, or who you really are. The courage lies in taking all those decisions that you need to take every day that you live. Every day there will be examples of things that you need to solve or answers you need to answer for yourself. And it takes a lot of courage to answer certain questions, to overcome certain hurdles. I know to take certain decisions. Yes, my view is uh, improving again. <laughs> Shit. I can't share the view with you guys. Maybe I should because it's the last beach day. And of course, the beach day needs to have booty. Bitcoin, beach, beautiful booties. Just imagine all those people watching back my videos and they're like, that guy zoomed in on my booty. <laughs> so the quote for today is it really takes courage. All the decisions, when you wake up, all the decisions that you make, they take courage. But if you have enough courage, to even overcome the most difficult decisions and hurdles in life, you will be able to change your life. It doesn't work in a very simple way like, ah, now I'm here, ah, tomorrow I'm there. It just doesn't work like that. You need to have courage to grow up, to become the person that you are really are. It just takes a shitload of that courage, guys. And I know it's difficult sometimes to say to your boss, Fuck off, I'm not gonna do that. But that is the kind of courage I'm talking about. If you keep running that hamster wheel because one person is in control and he's telling you, yeah, you uh, else I won't pay you your salary or else I will freeze your money like a bank or else you will go into jail like a government. If you keep fearing all of that, and you can't gather the courage to break through of that oppression, that centralized oppression, you will get stuck in that hamster wheel and you will be running that life all your life. There's a very cool video on YouTube about rats living in that hamster wheel. If you see that, then maybe you want to escape that life. I have a link to that video on our website because I want people to see that video. But to understand that that is an example of how most people are living. And only those that have the courage to step up and to say no to certain people, to say no to certain situations, to say no to a lot of other people that are in control, only those people that have that courage, only those will succeed in changing their life completely. It is simple as that. So for me, a very important quote, it takes courage to grow up to that person that you really are. And that guys is the end of the video. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy the video, then please give this video again, of course, a thumbs up, share it with all your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and let me know what you think about the charts, what you think about all the tips, what you think about everything I talked about in today's video. I hope you really enjoyed all these videos on the beautiful beach here in Phuket. Of course, the next couple of videos will probably be also still here in this beautiful island. But after that, yes, I will change from the beach scenery to other scenery. Hopefully you will enjoy that new scenery as well. Uh, but for now, last time enjoying my feet in this water here in Phuket in the early morning. I hope you enjoyed all the beach walks. If you did enjoy them, please at least tell one of your friends to start following us and share this video with one of your friends because I want to reach 75K subscribers before Bitcoin reaches 75K. And Bitcoin already touched 70K, guys. Already 70K. We didn't touch 70K yet for the subscribers. I think we got stuck at 69,800 or seven. 
something. I need 200 more subscribers to reach 70K as well. And then the competition is really on. I want to have 75K followers, subscribers before Bitcoin reaches that level, guys. Hopefully you can help me with that. Now, thank you for watching. I wish you an amazing Monday, an amazing week. I will keep you up to date every day, I guess. Tomorrow there's a special video. By the way, tomorrow I have a special video. Just make sure you subscribe to see that special video tomorrow. Thanks. Wish you an amazing day and see you tomorrow again. Bam.